In all my years on this earth, I have played and enjoyed many games from a variety of different genres. Platformers, RPGs, action adventure games, fighting games, platformers, hack and slash games, strategy games, platformers, kart races, first person shooters, third person shooters, platformers, you name a game genre, I've played it. And with all those genres of video games, there is plenty of joy to be had. They all offer something unique, and while I clearly prefer some over others, they're a lot of fun, and I can see the appeal in them all. But there is one exception, and of all the different types of games out there, there is one genre that I just do not understand, and that is the realm of sports games. I just don't get them, I don't understand why you would ever want to play them. And it's not because I hate sport, I've got nothing against sport. I may spend the majority of my life in the great indoors, moving as little as humanly possible, but that doesn't mean I don't appreciate the athletic endeavours that many dedicate their entire lives to. I've got no problems with bats and rackets, no problems with courts and fields, no problems with balls, in fact, I carry a pair with me at all times. I do not have a problem with sport, and I cannot stress that enough. My issue here is with sports games, video games that try to realistically replicate the real deal. The reason anyone would want to play them is beyond me. Because to me, surely anyone interested in these sports would rather play or watch the real thing. You don't get sports fans going, sorry mate, I'd love to come watch the game, but FIFA isn't going to play itself. Like, what kind of lunatic would prefer a computerised version of a sport over the genuine sport? It baffles me why anyone would play them, and yet, they're incredibly popular games, people love them. They're churned out yearly for so many different sports and people just eat them up. They're suckling at the teats of EA Sports and begging for more. I thought, I have to get to the bun with this. I have to understand why people play these games. Why do people like them so much? So I decided on six sports games on the PS1 to play in an attempt to wrap my head around it, and here's what I found. They're rubbish. My overall impression of these types of realistic sports games is that they're extremely shallow games that are boring and repetitive. It would be unlike me to make a claim like that without backing it up, so let's talk about the games I played individually, starting with FIFA 2001. I thought it made sense to start with FIFA, since it is the most popular of these sports games, which makes sense, since soccer is the most popular sport in the world. I played a few matches here. The first match I played was the only one I was somewhat invested in. I was actively into it, trying to win, trying to play well, even though I don't know all that much about soccer. What I do know about soccer is that nobody ever scores a fucking goal. It's just a lot of kicking the ball around, but not actually achieving anything with it. That's probably why soccer fans go nuts when there's a goal. They're amazed that something has happened. Anyway, it was a struggle, but eventually I did score a goal, and I did get a little excited by that. But then I quickly realised that that was the whole point, to score more goals than the other team. I had literally just experienced everything the game had to offer. I had seen everything there was to see in FIFA 2001 within the first five minutes of playing. The whole game is just that, over and over again. The game does have a bit more depth than that, there is a season mode where you take control of a team for a whole season, and I expect that that's where most FIFA players will dedicate their time, but it doesn't really add a whole lot from what I can tell. I can sort of see the appeal, but it's just playing lots of matches with some menu navigation squeezed between each one. Based on my half hour of playing, the gameplay experience of FIFA 2001 is just playing soccer with a controller instead of your actual body. It doesn't go any deeper than that, and it gets boring and repetitive very quickly. It didn't take long for me to try and entertain myself by assaulting the goalkeeper. It left a pretty weak impression. I was impressed by the dynamic commentary. I was surprised that the in-game commentators were able to tell what was going on with unexpectedly impressive accuracy, and I have to commend the game for attempting to recreate the atmosphere of a live soccer match with a cheering crowd and all that, but overall the game fell very flat, and by this point I'm no closer to understanding why this series of games is so popular. I then moved on to NBA Live 2002. I'm more familiar with basketball than soccer, so I know that even though basketball is just hand soccer, it is generally more action-packed and exciting. My fingers were crossed for a more captivating gameplay experience here, and it was more captivating, but not by much. Before I started playing these games, I had a hunch that the quality of the gameplay would largely be dependent on the sport it's trying to replicate, and it's looking like that hunch was correct. Because basketball is inherently a faster paced game due to its smaller court number of players, the shot clock, and with it generally just being easier to score goals, I found that the gameplay of NBA Live 2002 was more fun. But I feel like the only reason for that was because I was scoring more goals. The endorphin boost from scoring a goal occurs a lot more often in basketball than in soccer, which is great. But it did wear off very quickly, just like with FIFA. It didn't take long for me to start getting bored. To attempt to make the game more fun for myself, I resorted to just fucking around. 
scoring goals from half court, launching the ball from one end of the court to the other and then dunking, fouling on purpose, that sort of thing. I did find that amusing for a little while, eventually that got boring too. So I dug around in the other game modes. Like FIFA, NBA Live 2002 also has a season mode and it's exactly the same premise, playing a bunch of basketball matches in a row with some menu navigation between each one. What I did like about it though is that you can just simulate the games rather than play them yourself, which means you don't even have to lift a finger and you can get the season over and done with in about 5 minutes. NBA Live 2002 does have more game modes than FIFA 2001 so there is more going on here. For example, there's a Michael Jordan 1v1 game mode in which you play basketball against Michael Jordan in a 1v1. Sounds cool, but once you get into it, you realise that it's an eerily quiet, incredibly awkward, shallow game mode that is somehow less exciting than reading Baby's first alphabet book. You know it's bad when the most amusing part of the game mode is repeatedly failing to push over Michael Jordan. Oh, I also enjoyed the game repeatedly telling me that I took it really hard to the hole that time. He really took it hard to the hole that time. I'd say NBA Live 2002 is barely a step up from FIFA 2001. They have the same problem in that they're shallow, boring and repetitive, but NBA Live 2002 is ever so slightly less of each. And those three words, shallow, boring and repetitive, are a trio of words I feel like I'll be using a lot during this video. The next game I tried was Madden NFL 2000. I don't know anything about NFL, but if this game is anything to go by, then NFL is one of the shittiest sports I've ever seen. It is rubbish. From what I can tell, you select a formation, then all the players pile up on top of each other. That's the whole sport. Now look, I've got nothing against men piling on top of each other, but it's only fun if they don't have any clothes on. Madden NFL 2000 isn't fun at all. You want to talk about shallow, boring and repetitive, this game knocks all three of those categories out of the park. Which is an out of place baseball joke, but I'm not looking at any baseball games in this video so just roll with it. I don't think I've ever had less fun playing a game than Madden NFL 2000, and I've played Bubsy 3D. Because I clearly wasn't understanding how this game was meant to be played, I decided to watch the demo footage to see what was actually supposed to be happening, and yep, it looks just as awful as it was to play. I don't think I've been bored with such ferocity before. It's frustrating how little this game has to offer in terms of fun. I've had more fun reading terms and conditions. Madden NFL 2000, like the other two games we've looked at so far, also has a season mode, but who the fuck would want a whole season of this shit? Even the in-game commentators sound bored. What I'm worried about is accidentally turning this video into a review on the actual sports. I'm sure NFL in real life is… okay. But Madden NFL 2000 does not do it any justice. Clearly I don't know what I'm doing in it, but I would hardly even call it a game. Why anyone would want to play this is beyond me. So far this whole experience has been rough. Out of the three sports games I've played, I've enjoyed a grand total of zero. So not a great success rate there. I figured it was time to try something a little different. This next game isn't just a sports game, it's a motorsports game, Gran Turismo. This game is better than the last three games combined. Finally, something with substance, something I can actually enjoy. I'm not really that fond of racing games, I'd much prefer a kart racer where there's chaos around every corner, but I can appreciate what realistic motorsports games bring to the table. Gran Turismo does what every other game we've looked at so far fails to do, offer interesting gameplay. You can do standard races where you put your driving skills to the test against other races, or you can attempt the time trial to get the best time on a particular track, of which there are plenty. This is a game where you actively need to try to do well, you can't just spam slide tackle and eventually win. If you drive recklessly the game will behave realistically, and you will lose control of your vehicle. I know that because it manages to accurately replicate how I drive in real life. I'm not saying that Gran Turismo is the best game ever made, it's essentially Mario Kart with all the wacky fun elements removed but it at least has some substance and is the only sports game so far where I didn't want to end my miserable existence. Gran Turismo is a game that can be fun. It isn't shallow, it isn't boring, it isn't repetitive. I mean, it might be if you play it at length, but for the half hour I played it for, I enjoyed it. Let's hope we can ride this wave of positivity a bit longer with the next game, Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2000. I should have known, it's golf. 
I already thought it was bad enough that the menu was displayed in Comic Sans, but I didn't think the gameplay would be this painfully uneventful. I don't know what I was expecting. Golf, in and of itself, is boring. The only way any human can enjoy golf is if they are retired, divorced, or both. No one else gives even the slightest shit about golf. So the fact that I thought a golf video game would have anything half decent to offer just goes to show how much of a fucking moron I am. Tiger Woods PGA Tour 2000 is nothing. It has only two game modes, but they don't change anything about the gameplay, not even menu navigation. It's just hit the ball towards the flag. There isn't even any commentary, absolutely no depth or interesting content whatsoever. It's so fucking bad. It might even be worse than Madden, and that's one brutal indictment if I've ever heard one. I'd literally rather take an entire set of golf clubs up the rectum than play this game again. We've got one game to go, Knockout Kings 2001. Will this be the game to save the reputation of all sports games? No. No it won't. Because guess what? This game is shit too. Going into a boxing game like this, I thought maybe this will be like a realistic fighting game, like a Street Fighter or a Tekken, but based in the world of real life boxing. But no, god forbid there's anything fun in a sports game. I went into Knockout Kings 2001 hoping for an intricate boxing game where you have to dodge, block and punch at the right time to best your opponent. What I got was a game where you can wipe the floor with a clone of yourself by bitching them into the corner with uppercuts until they keel over and die. There is a career mode here as well, which would be cool if the gameplay was any good. It's such a shame that something like a boxing game could be so bland and uninteresting. Even the arena just looked like the inside of a steel crate. The name Knockout Kings promises way more than this game could ever hope to deliver. So disappointing. Those are all the sports games I have the mental fortitude to endure. You'll probably have noticed a pattern with these sports games, they were all shallow, boring and repetitive. I keep using those words, but they're literally the perfect words to describe these games. The games have no substance, it's the same thing over and over, and they're not fun. And even on the rare occasion that they are fun, the fun dries up pretty quickly. To be honest, I think these games were doomed to be like this from the get-go, simply because they're restricted to being a realistic sports game. If they weren't locked into being realistic, you could have actually put some fun ideas in there. Special character abilities, power-ups, wacky fields and courts, the possibilities would be endless. But because the games have to be grounded in the real world, there's no room to do anything cool with them, and the games suffer because of that. Even when these games attempt to add some depth with extra modes, it just ends up recycling that same shallow repetitive gameplay. That might be why I find them so boring. Every other video game in existence is a break from reality. You can do things in video games that you would never be able to do in real life. So why the hell would anyone prefer the mundanity of the realistic over the excitement of the unrealistic? Which brings me back to the whole point of this little adventure I've been on. Why do people play these sports games? As a fan and avid player of video games, I did not see the appeal in 5 of the 6 games that I played. Gran Turismo was the only one I could get behind as a solid gameplay experience. The other five did not interest me whatsoever. After suffering through all of this, I think I've come to a realisation. I think it's just that these games... aren't meant for me. I'm not the target audience, and that's why I think they're rubbish. This whole time I've been thinking about how I don't understand why you would opt to play the video game incarnation of a sport instead of doing the real thing, but that's probably it. These games are made for people who do do the real thing. These games are made for the fans of their respective sports. It's a way for them to get more of the sport they love into their lives. Of course that's not going to interest me, I'm not interested in sport. I'm more interested in helping cartoon animals take down evil scientists and saving the world from evil dragon gods. I genuinely think that sports games are a case where the video games aren't made for people who play video games. They're made for people who play sports. I'm sure from the perspective of a sports fan, these games are incredible. But from the perspective of a genuine gamer, they're rubbish, and I never want to play them again.